Well, I don't see anybody else pulling in, so I guess we can get started so we can uh, respect everybody's time. And thank you all for coming out to uh, the ward meeting for wards one and four. Um, as most of you know, we will give you a short overview. And then with the main thing we want to do the ward meetings is to hear from the wards. Not for me to stand up here and talk. Um, I like to keep things short anyhow. But uh, somebody else coming, I'll stall a little bit. But, but again, uh, we'll, we'll get into a question after. We're going to have a short presentation by the city manager. And then uh, after that, we'll open up to question and answers. And uh, the way we normally do it, one question per person, unless everybody's asked their questions, then we'll, we'll go back to somebody. <coughs> I try to do one side and the other just to try to keep it uh, moving, so, uh, and no partiality on who I'm picking on. <laughs> we, we don't need that, but uh, 2019 was tough. 2020, we didn't have the ward meetings because of the, the COVID. And fortunately now, uh, it loosened up a bit. Now we don't know what's going to happen again on, on the back end, but uh, I hope things stay open and uh, keep moving along that way. Of course, you know, I'm, we have our two ward council people. Ward 1, Sandy Spinks. You can clap. Ward 4, Paula Mizet. Oh, I'll tell you, two of the hardest working people on council. Yes. It, and you agree, I know. Um, it's interesting, looking back at 2019, the last time we had our ward meetings, and some of the expectations that we were discussing and uh, exploring were we needed a new rescue squad for the fire department. We needed a new engine for the fire department. We need to get Union Street fixed. You know, that's a different ward, but I think all of us drive on it one time or another. And for years, we heard about getting it fixed. I know I heard about it a lot. It's actually happening right now. But uh, and and Broadway Avenue, we've been talking about, and you're going to hear in Mike's discussion about the results of stuff we were looking at in 2019 and some more, uh, which which is a good thing. And, and one of my new pet, well, not really new, one of my pet projects now, uh, have you seen the mural on the back of the bicycle shop down on Broadway? You know, you go around back. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go up, drive up toward the, the library, then come down Tarbell, you'll see this magnificent uh, mural on the wall. Mike, do we, did you leave that picture in? I did not. I okay. Try to, I That's all right. Uh, and uh, it's just spectacular. It's a, a bicycle with flowers on the whole back of the building that uh, Mike and Laura Hewlett from Broadway Cyclery sponsored to have that up there. Uh, and of course, the mural for the uh, um, Underground Railroad right across from the post office. Well, I want to see all our blank walls in town painted. And they don't all have to be the same or flowers or whatever, but. I want to see every blank wall in town to have something on it because it's just so welcoming to come in and see that and not just dull drab walls all right. So I'm working on that main thing, you know, if you got an extra few bucks laying around, you want to sponsor a painting, I'd be happy to, to work with you. So uh, with that, I am going to cut it short, like I said, and I'm going to turn it over to Mouse. Do, do you want to have the uh, board uh, council on it? Uh, I don't know how you want. Uh, did you talk to them? Uh, should they do an intro? Would you? Yeah, you can. Whatever you prefer. Whenever you're ready. Say, but before we do that, we, we, have, yeah. we have one more thing. Yeah. We do have a, a special award we'd like to give out. And uh, I'm going to call uh, Councilwoman Spinks up because uh, she was the one behind this, which I wholeheartedly agree with. And I think it's only appropriate that you shout out who it is. You better 
give you glasses. Here, you want mine? This is really special to me because these have become very good friends of mine. I think everybody here in my big mouth. Um, I'd like to give a, a certificate of appreciation to the Bedford Auto Mall Association for all that they have done. Um, pretty much most of my award businesses happens to be the Auto Mall. I know Jeff has a few. He shares that uh, honor with me. But uh, just what they do for our city is just simply amazing. And it, this is a small little token of just telling you how I appreciate what you do for us and what you do for our city in so many different ways. And we have uh, two uh, special representatives up here tonight. And um, I'd just like to uh, present this to you. It says Bedford Automobile Association Certificate of Appreciation. Oh, <laughs> the City of Bedford, Ohio wishes to express recognition and appreciation to Bedford Automobile Association for the generous donation of $50,500 for various improvements throughout our city. And all the helps with do our police dogs and everything, they just, they're phenomenal. I, so I appreciate you guys. So, Bill. <laughs> People you don't know how lucky you have it with these people behind me. You know, I just built on the Mazda dealer. I just built a new store. Didn't have to build it in Bedford. You know, could have went anywhere. The manufacturer wouldn't let me go anywhere uh, because the Bedford Auto Mall means a lot to all manufacturers. Uh, the city makes it easy for us to do biz business in the city. Uh, it's a partnership, and we like every single person in this building. Um, and I just want to say thanks for everything the city and the residents do for us. And we can't do enough for you guys. So thank you. I kind of have a loud voice, so I may, I may wander a little bit. If anybody can't hear me, just, you know, raise your hand. Um, I just want to first start out, obviously, first and foremost, um, you know, recognize the individuals, uh, the men and women uh, behind me and, and off to the side. I mean, you know, I, I am lucky to have and work with um, the team that's, that's here. And that's what gets everything done. It's not one person. It's not what one of us want to do or, you know, hey, we got to tackle this project, this person. It is a collective effort. And I think over the last 12 months, uh, 18 months to be quite honest with you, is when we really saw that. Um, it was, you know, a very challenging 18 months, as everybody knows. Um, and that's when you find out kind of the team that you have. Um, and it's not only the directors, it's all of the assistants um, who, you know, bounced ideas off, um, came up with solutions, how do we tackle this project, how do we help the residents, and it was, you know, just a, a tremendous group. I, I, I'm going to kind of go around the room real quick. Um, our finance director, Frank, Frank Ambosi, is here. Um, economic development uh, director, Jennifer Kuzma, is here. Service director, Clint Beller. Our building commissioner, Calvin Beverly. Our assistant fire chief, Dan Dopsloff. Our recreation director, Aaron Thatch. And our lieutenant in the police department, Mike Stask. Um, again, you, you, what you accomplish, we accomplish as a team. And um, tremendous, tremendous group that we have. Obviously, that's not working. So. Speaking of team, uh, Sandy alluded to Jeff Asbury from Ward 5 is here with us. And uh, the glue that keeps us all together, Tracy Simons, our clerk of courts. I'm just going to get... 
Just going to give a quick overview. Some of these slides, for those of you that were either at the city, um, State of the City address, or I had a chance to view it online. Some of this is pulled off of there. It's a quick synopsis. I won't t touch on everything, but I kind of want to did um, identify a couple items. One, where we finished uh, year end. Um, you can see we uh, currently have $5.4 million in reserves that is set in place. Um, and we finished the year 2020 with uh, over $1.3 million in the general fund. That went up significantly, and it did so for a reason. We knew that this year would be our big hit as far as COVID is concerned with unemployment numbers and other challenges. And our goal was obviously to build that up. Certain things that we cut back on that we had planned last year, um, there was some federal money that came in, and the goal was to build that up. And I do want to mention one thing, um, and I'm going to put Mr. Gambozzi on the, on the spot real quick. Uh, we received notification a few weeks ago um, from the state auditor, and he issued a press release, and it's not something to um, kind of brush under the table. Uh, it was very unique that we were included in that. And Frank, do you want to touch on that? It's, it's quite an honor, even the word distinction is used by the state auditor's office. Not only do you get an award for preparing the annual report that we do, it's called the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. But when you prepare it in a way, and it goes along with all these department directors, where they and their staff have worked towards us to help us do proper record keeping for the public. And in doing so, we have done it in a manner where there were no citations, no recommendations, no major things wrong. All the grants that we received were audited, everything came through squeaky clean basically is what we're talking about. So very few, there were eight entities in the whole state of Ohio receiving this award last year, we were one of them. So I think that goes a long way in saying thanks to all these directors, the city managers, uh, council, uh, we did a really nice job and we continue to do so, just so you know that. We're good uh, stewards of your money and we'll continue to do that. Thanks, Frank. I Frank has a big part of that. Um, you know, he is, he's the guy that, that keeps those things in line. Uh, what, he, what he didn't mention was, yes, we got that award this year. We've received it twice over the last five years. And that's almost unheard of. It's, it's honestly, it is almost unheard of. And I think that goes to show, as he said, you know, we're being you know, very uh, good stewards with the, with the finances. Um, there were no findings of recovery. Uh, they review ethics items, all of that. All those boxes were checked and um, well done Frank and, and, and the entire finance department as well as um, the directors real quickly um, obviously last year huge hurdle um, you know one of the things that I that I like to mention I, I think it was late last summer the governor kind of issued a plea to communities and it was on a local level and he really asked communities to put together a team you got to get it you got to get a team together to, to manage you know, how your city is going to function, are you going to keep employing where you're employing, all of these items. He made that announcement in, in late summer. We actually put together that kind of, you know, crisis team. Um, it was the last week of February, and we were meeting almost three times a week. We knew things that we needed. What, what are our three primary goals that came out of those initial meetings? And those goals were, obviously, we needed to reduce the financial impact. We know there is going to be. We're, we're seeing it this year. But we got ahead of that last February. The second item was maintaining that workforce. We know maintaining the workforce, it goes along with providing the vital services to our residents. And that could not be compromised. So we needed to make sure that that happened. You know, we saw a number of communities, our surrounding communities, where they trimmed back because they knew there'd be a financial impact. We wanted to shift and figure out a way not to have to do that. And then the third thing was how do we help people? Um, you know, we have given, I, I have to give Aaron um, and uh, Parks and Recreation Department a lot of credit, um, as well as Jen, as well as business owners. The Auto Mile Association, we had a couple other donations. We received about $25,000 um, in donations to help people. We gave, a, we gave out thousands of boxes of food to anybody that needed, that needed assistance throughout last year. We took that money, we applied for it, doubled it, got some grant dollars, and continued to distribute those boxes of food to people in need. You know, they, they established an online portal where people could go on there and sign up for 
um, you know, calling to check on our seniors, to um, you can enter in what you may need. If someone was afraid to go out and they needed laundry detergent, we would get it to them. And you know, you know that you're doing something right when you have a couple communities contact us when they saw this online and they're asking us how we're doing it, what department are you working it through? And I think that's the, the, the best sign of, um, the best compliment is when people try to copy what you're doing. So um, that was kind of our approach. Um, like I said, Aaron and his staff deserve a lot of, um, a, a lot of uh, kudos for that. Well done. <laughs> well, going through the, the list, I know Mayor uh, talked on and touched on um, some of the items, but you can see, you know, the first bullet point for those that have kind of been paying attention to the recent council meetings, Tinkers Creek Commerce Park. Um, it was an industrial park. It's gone undeveloped for probably 17, 18 years. Um, over the last two months, we started passing legislation. Uh, the most recent, last Tuesday. Um, one of those pieces of legislation is authorizing the city to take that property. Um, we are working hand in hand with the current owner, with Cuyahoga County, as well as a developer and two existing businesses in Bedford. Two businesses that, that are, have been currently looking outside because they've outgrown their operations. We want to make sure we retain them. And we, we believe we are at the rounding third and we hope to see some significant uh, development at that park. And it's been years of hard work. I have to compliment our, our law director, um, Frank, and, and Jen as well, who have been um, point people on that. And again, we're, we're, we're finally, hopefully, knock on wood, rounding uh, third and almost home, and we'll start seeing that development there. And we'll have more to announce. Um, we need to wait on that um, because we're not there yet. Uh, but you can see some of the things that we um, accomplished. Last year, we took ownership of a new uh, EMS squad. We took ownership of a new engine, almost a million dollars in investment um, with the fleet and the fire department. Um, you can see our police updates. We brought on a second canine unit. Um, I want to give a quick story. Uh, and, and, and when we received our first canine unit, I remember speaking with the Auto Mile and, and Mr. Clonaris um, about the importance of not only Bedford, but surrounding communities and that resource. A couple weeks ago, we received a mutual aid call from Warrensville Heights, one of our neighboring communities. And they were uh, looking for a shooting suspect. And we had our canine unit, our second one was on, uh, was on duty. We responded to try to assist. Um, our canine was able to track that shooting suspect. He was hiding underneath a car. Um, he would not show his hands. Um, he would not come out. Um, our, our officer, Nero, was able to um, was able to convince him to show his hands and, and come out. And um, he came out, he was apprehended, um, no one was injured. And again, that just shows the resource of not only our community, our neighboring communities, and to have two of those um, units um, on duty is, is a tremendous resource. It couldn't have, it couldn't have happened without, again, uh, the Bedford Auto Mile. Uh, a couple other things, our police department, uh, for those familiar with, they recently were certified through the Ohio Collaborative uh, Police Advisory. It's an organization through the state. Um, they look at all of it. They have a whole, whole list of standards. We met every single standard. Um, the majority of ours were actually above their minimums. Um, so we've now been fully certified. And as, uh, as well this year, and um, thanks to City Council who you know, unanimously supported, we had an initiative we've been speak, uh, speaking about um, but this year, all of our officers and all of our vehicles are outfitted with uh, body and dash cams. Um, that is, I believe it was over a $350,000 um, investment that was made. Um, and that's for everybody's safety. It's the safety of our officers, safety of the public. Um, and I think it was vital. And that started, I believe that went into place early summer. We start, we rolled that out. Um, the, the body cameras yeah. were back in May. May. The cruisers were July. Thank you, Mike. A couple other things. We, we know that we have Union Street going on. Broadway, we have plans. Um, right now for Broadway, we are wrapping up. Actually, I believe uh, Clint mentioned uh, the plans for Broadway have been finished, and we're, we're approaching the point where we're going to be going out to bid. I know that's not this ward, but Broadway goes through the entire city. Um, throughout the historic district, there's one water line that needs to be abandoned. It's from the 30s. 
Um, there's electrical upgrades that need to be made, curb repairs that need to get made. It's about $800 to $1 million investment. Um, we are going down that road to do that this year. We want to start that construction in the fall and finish it in the spring. The reason is the mayor, um, service director, and myself, we met with ODOT a couple of years ago. We were talking about Broadway and the condition of Broadway. Um, originally, I believe it was planned to be resurfaced in 2025, I think they mentioned. Um, obviously, that wasn't acceptable to us. We believe that you know there was a significant increase in traffic due to the 271 project. Um, we kind of went back and forth with them, and they agreed to bump it up to fiscal year 2022. What that means is construction can start next summer of 2022. So we need to wrap up, get our project done, and then next summer we fully anticipate ODOT will be resurfacing the entire length of Broadway um, from Corp Limit to Corp Limit. Um, we'll be responsible for 20% of that. Uh, there'll be new ADA ramps at all of the sidewalks. Um, substantial investment, probably about between five and uh, $600,000 on our end, and ODOT will be contributing about 1.6. So a lot of construction going on, necessary construction. Um, I also want to commend City Council um, for supporting a, a project that, that uh, Clint had identified, and that was annual maintenance of um, sanitary sewers and, and storm sewers throughout the city. Um, we are now budgeting 10000 It's not a lot, but it's what we can do. Um, 10000 annually, and we contract that with Cuyahoga County. And they come out and they do reg regular jetting, televising. They identify areas that we may need to, to repair. Um, and we do that in certain areas where we feel that there, there could be some tree root issues or um, blockages. But um, that's been a uh, worthwhile investment. A um, couple dates, we have a shred day coming up in uh, September 25th. We have our Fall Fest coming up first Saturday in October. And, and, and one other thing I want to mention and just give a little plug here. Frank and I spoke about this a few weeks ago. Um, there's a lot of great community organizations in Bedford. You know, these events that go on downtown, they don't go on with, without any, you know, um, volunteer, um, any community involvement. You know, we have great groups. If it's um, the Bedford Historical Society, tremendous organization, they do a lot of great events downtown. Bedford Rotary, um, great group. You have the Bedford Downtown Alliance. All these organizations need volunteers. You know, we need help. If you want to get involved, contact one of them. If you need phone numbers, let us know. Um, they're a great group. They do great things. The Rotary Club donates to the schools. If you're looking to get involved, this is just kind of a little plug to our, our local organizations. Um, they can always use, um, use the help. Just touching on grants, uh, you can see some... Well, you said if anybody here would like to volunteer, we'll have a sign-up sheet right here to see me after. Uh, you'd like to get it while you're fresh in your mind. Can I just, all, all the organizations need help, but we can come up with some kind of general list and get the okay. results. And we'll have a sheet up here uh, after the meeting. Thank you, Mayor. You can see some of the grants that we've done. The majority of the things that we go after any and every dollar that's out there. And we're able to do more when we go after those funds. You can see Union Street. Um, Union Street's getting resurfaced. We did the water line a couple years ago. We thought it would be prudent to televise the sewer as well before that street gets done. Um, we did that. We saw a couple areas that we felt um, that needed to get addressed. We actually applied for funding through the state. We were awarded about $320,000. That work's getting done um, on top of the resurfacing. So knock on wood, we know that water line's new. The sewer repairs were made. It's time to repave that road and move on. And hopefully, again, we don't have to deal with that for some time, as, as I know Clint would be uh, happy with that. Um, you can see Broadway. I spoke about the Broadway project, um, and that being about 800 to a million dollars. We also applied for a grant. Um, it's a loan, a zero interest, I believe, 20-year loan um, for that. Um, it's always good to use someone else's money, even even if it's a grant, or I'm sorry, even if it's a loan and we have to pay it back at zero interest. Um, it's good to put the, use their money up front instead of our own. So um, you can see some of those things that, that were done, um, as well as Egbert Road um, and our trees. Uh, Jennifer did a great job working with Clint and uh, his assistant, Sean Francis. 
with uh, the tree grant. Um, we hope that they'll continue those grants. That was through uh, Cuyahoga County and County Planning. Um, and if they do, we'll continue to apply for that. Um, you can see, you know, maintaining our neighborhoods, we, we've gone after uh, demolition grants, uh, grants to demolish homes. We, we have not had a lot, but those that we need to address, we will address them. Uh, we still have some funds sitting uh, that we could still utilize for demo. Um, it's not as easy. I mean, you got to kind of go through a process and, and um, to get it done, it takes months. Um, I've dealt with some, we've dealt with some that have been years, um, but we will go after the, those, those demo funds. Um, you could see on Broadway, uh, we'll get to the business in a minute, but we just took down 591 Broadway, which was a, an abandoned building for some time. Um, definitely an eyesore, um, and it was good to get that one removed. A um, couple interesting pieces here, though, is um, in 2019, I was looking back at different data that we keep, and you know, you have your bank-owned, foreclosed, and vacant homes. You know, at the at the height of, of the housing crisis, we were you know 350, 400. Um, considering our neighbors, we, that's low. You know, some of our neighbors, I won't point them out. They were 1, 1,500. Um, in 2019, we were at 250. Um, data earlier this year shows 150. So we're, we're, we're moving in, in, in the right direction with that, um, getting that number down. And as well as our, our uh, quality of life traffic enforcement, if it's speeders, we know that. You know, we know that's a, that's a concern to, to residents. Um, if it's parking violations, I have to co commend our, our PD. Um, they're on those things. Sometimes with towing, it's not as simple. Um, but, you know, traffic numbers, Parking citations, they've tripled this year compared to years past. So we are targeting that. Um, I will say if there's an area of concern, let us know. Talk to us after if you don't want to mention it. If you have a neighbor or whatnot, you know, let, let us know if there's a concern like that and we'll, we'll obviously address it. We like to target the, the, the violator and not just do a wide, street, wide sweep and just say, hey, no one can park anywhere or, um, you know, vice versa. So let us know. But kudos to police. They're working on it. They're trying. Um, I do want to play a short video here uh, real quickly for those of you that um, did not hear uh, a few weeks ago Zelia contacted us and they had a press release and for those of you that don't know this has been an ongoing project they're a great um, great company that we were able to get here to move in um, when Ben Venu left um, they have about 300 employees um, they've really, really been working over the last five years to get approval to manufacture. And that press release announced that they're finally able to manufacture for sale pharmaceuticals. And it was a huge, huge step for them. Um, they actually, uh, the mayor and, and Jen, myself and the vice mayor, um, we were afforded the opportunity to go on a tour. Um, they actually had the state of Ohio there videotaping for ads, for um, job fairs that are coming up. There's a lot of good things going on there. They, they, you know, they have to take their time. It, it's a process. Um, but again, the, the fact that they are, the fact that they are now producing um, is outstanding. I will. Uh, they shared with us a, a video that I will share with everyone here if I can get it to work. And um, kind of says it says it all what they're what they have going on. Maybe I won't be able to show it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just leave it up and, and show it uh, for anyone after. I'm not sure why it is not going through there, but I will show it after. It's a great video. Uh, we have it online. We have it. Uh, we had it during the state of the city. Um, take a look at it. Um, I'll leave this computer up here for anybody that wants to see it after. But it just again highlights what they're doing. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to have gone. I'm, I'm te technology. I'm, I'm having a glitch there. I apologize. Uh, Meadowbrook. I, Mr. Clenars mentioned his new dealership there at the corner. Um, definitely stepped up and we rezoned that, city council rezoned that to mixed use a few years ago. Um, and we're now actively working to fill the space 
Um, you can see the BMB has moved in, the Tidal Bureau, there's a restaurant up there. There was one, we had one, I, I would say it's significant, um, one loss of the pandemic, and that was the company that was in the process of moving into the Walmart. Um, there was a um, uh, manufacturing company that employed about 65 people. Um, their plan was to grow to 100. Um, when the pandemic hit and the shutdown occurred, they lost eight out of their 10 um, contracts nationwide. They knew they would not be in a position to expand. Um, and the current owner of Walmart let them out of that lease obligation, um, knowing they wouldn't be able to fulfill it. And now they're back to marketing that space. So um, we hope there, there are interested, um, interested entities and we hope that that'll get, that'll get filled soon. Um, you can see some new investment. We have an insurance firm that moved into the old Mr. G's. Um, outstanding group. Um, love Bedford. They were actually looking all over Northeast Ohio. Um, ironically, we, we found this old bar. We were able to make it work. Um, he put a substantial investment into that building. Um, he has plans to add a green space and a park near the parking lot. And he is actually negotiating for the purchase of the land where we just tore the building down right next door, which is the old animal clinic, 591 Broadway. So um, a great small business. Um, I, obviously the Automire, you can see just their investment in their buildings, uh, but also the donation. You know, when they called earlier, I, I, I wanna add a little bit to that. I, I know that Councilwoman Spinks mentioned, uh, they recently donated over $50,000 to Bedford. Um, and some things that we're looking at, looking at is obviously to ensure that we can maintain that canine division. Um, you know, when, when one retires, uh, we're also looking at um, this group a couple years ago, I don't know um, if anybody's familiar with, they actually provided another 20, 20 plus thousand dollars for a, we call it a pilot program. Um, and we installed, I, I don't know how many cameras, there's, there, there's a lot, there's a lot of cameras throughout Rockside, all down Rockside, all down Broadway. Um, those cameras can be fed to the station, fed into the cruisers. Um, they've been vital in um, solving cases. They've been vital with, um, if it's an accident, whatnot, using that information. They funded that whole, pro the Automile funded that entire project. Um, we are also now looking to utilize the, the, some of the funds they've donated um, to a similar um, project throughout the historic district and on the commons to add that sense of security for our small businesses, for the park. Um, I think it would be tremendous. And then obviously we have some other ideas. So uh, Bill, George, thank you. Much appreciated um, with that. You see 2021 and beyond, some things um, unique to, to the ward. Uh, APEC Engineering, Mr. Barry, they purchased the old YMCA. Substantial investment. They're going to be moving their um, operations there. Currently, they were on uh, Willis Street. Um, so that facility is completely being redone. Um, we're also improving um, some park features, uh, electric vehicle charging stations will be installed downtown. They'll be installed in the municipal lot here. Um, you can see we received a note, uh, actually I'm going to jump ahead, the municipal pool facility. One of the things that we're looking at this year, there's about $200,000 in grants that are available to uh, cities uh, through the county. We are targeting those grants to um, reconstruct our pool house. Um, I will tell you when we did the pool house in 2006, we did the pool in 2006, the pool house was cut back due to budgetary concerns. Um, we only did the pool. That pool house was built in, I think, 1964. Um, it, it, it's showing its age to be polite, correct, Aaron? Yeah. Um, we are looking at how we can go after. We have some renderings that were drawn up. Um, it has to get replaced. Um, what we're looking at is identifying the, the county grants. Um, this is actually a project that would fall under um, some of the ARPA funds. If we need to bridge funding, we can use some of the ARPA funds for that. Um, and Jen is also looking through the county um, to possibly get a grant, which I don't want to say it is earmarked, but there's a good chance we can get it for the demolition. So again, if we could spend other people's money, that, that's our first goal is to do that. Um, but that's a project that we really need to look at. I mean, that building is, it, it is in poor shape and, and we need to address it. Um, 
And then you can see NOACA. The NOACA grant is a huge um, first step, as we said. I know we've talked about this for years. You know, we acquired all the property along Willis Street. Um, we acquired all the property down by Viaduct. We want to connect it with a bridge and um, over the viaduct to the metro parks. We want to have a bike and pedestrian trail to where you can go right from downtown into the Bedford Reservation. Um, we've applied for some grants. We weren't successful. Um, it is a minimum million dollar project. NOACA has two grants. They have obviously construction dollar grants that they can provide. And then they have, but, but the only way you can get those funds, you have to go through their planning process first. And that's a separate grant. Um, we've, we've applied in the past and we didn't get it. Um, we were successful. Jen was successful in getting the grant. I believe it's seven, eight, eighty thousand. It's an eighty thousand dollar grant to do all the planning for that project. The good, the good thing is you don't get a planning grant from NOACA unless they really believe in the project. And that's a huge first step. We go through this project, we're now eligible to apply for the construction dollars. So it is something that we've talked about for years. Um, we want to make happen. Um, I think it's vital to connect um, that resource. It's two of our biggest resource, you know, our biggest assets, our historic downtown and the metro parks. How do you connect that? You know, how do you have that walkability? And that's something that we're looking at. Obviously, from a planning standpoint, you look even beyond that. You know, that is something that we're clearly working on and clearly going to see happen. Um, one of the other things is really starting to think outside the box. What else can we do? How can we improve downtown? Um, our plan, we spoke about this last year at the State of the City, and our, our plan was to really engage the public um, and hear their input during last year's ward meetings, and we know how that went. There wasn't any. So here we are. We're, we're, we're here tonight, and we're talking about some things that, you know, this is something that wouldn't take place next year. This would be years down the road. Um, but we're looking at some ideas on how do we expand the commons? How do we expand our, our area where we have all of these events in the summer? What can we do to make sure there's activity there in the wintertime? Um, you can see some of these renderings behind us um, that we have, which would include obviously a, a fountain feature in the summertime, um, you know, an area where you could sit around a fire. Um, there's some interactive uh, items for um, the children. But the unique thing is in the wintertime, you know, that, that would be an ice rink. People can go down there, they can, they can skate, um, they can go to the local coffee shop, restaurant, um, enjoy the Christmas lights and things like that. Um, so these are things that you know, we're, we're brainstorming, we're always trying to think of different ideas. Um, obviously want to share it with the public and where it goes, obviously um, it's yet to be seen. But you know, this group behind us is, is extremely dedicated um, you know, if there's something that we, that, that they set their sights on, that this is what we need to do, they'll find a way to figure it out. Um, you know, we want to hear from you and, um, and we'll see. I know I flew through some of that. Um, I tried to touch on everything. Again, it's the majority of this is online. It's um, part of the state of the city. Um, but now we will, uh, I believe, turn it over to the council members and then we'll open it up for questions. Thank you. from this weekend with our festival. I want a special little shout out to our mayor over here and his uh, family. The mayor, his brother, his son, his wife show so much dedication to the city. I have never, I've known a lot of city officials was involved um, with a, a lot of things back home in Louisiana and I've never seen a mayor so committed to a city. Um, is ours. So, San, thank you and your lovely wife. You. And we have a couple more of our hardworking volunteers, Chris and Terry, here that also worked very, very hard this weekend to make this uh, 
very, very successful event, the Art and Artisan Festival, which was kind of thrown together in, what, three months, Chris? <laughs> so we had a little team, but we had a mighty team, and it was very successful. We were so blessed with beautiful weather. Um, so it was, a, it was a great turnout, very good. Um, this last year and a half has been very challenging for all of us. Um, as everybody knows, the mayor could say eight years ago, we both came into a lot of challenges. Um, so this is nothing new to us. We face it head on with each other. Good things that had happened before the pandemic hit, Mazda, of course, moved into a new location, uh, which was an eyesore there on that corner in January 2020. And it stands, as, as uh, uh, Mike said, APEC Holding um, Incorporation started remodeling, and still remodeling the old YMCA, which is really dear to me when I moved up here 21 years ago. I worked at that YMCA. So for Dave to take me in and show me what it looks like now, it brought back a lot of memories where the pool was. There's going to be offices. So um, his mother, lovely mother, is in the, off, uh, the audience, which is a, a resident of mine. Young men from here, both sons very hardworking, wife's very hardworking, just a good family. So it's good to have one of our very own opening up uh, another business coming up soon. Also in Meadowbrook, we've got a new, uh, the new Bedford Nutrition will be moving into soon to the old Best Cut Shopping Center. Um, next, to, next to Mazda, where Cleveland Jewelry is. Um, something that I'm working on, it won't be in Ward 1, but it's okay, it'll be actually in Jeff's Ward. Um, there may be possibly working on a new belly dance studio in the old Salsa Center. So, um, one of my dear friends who um, is 69 years old, is phenomenal, does not look that old, uh, performed for us this weekend. And uh, actually, David Barry's wife approached him and said, hey, you need to come to Bedford. I have the perfect place for you. So uh, Marilyn Barry and me are working on getting a studio somewhere to fill up one of those empty buildings in the, the downtown area. So I'll be talking to you more about it. <laughs> um, let's see. Awesome. Some exciting news. Been working very hard. I was the first application in Cuyahoga County to turn in um, for the capital budget grant. And what this, and with the gracious help of our state representative, Juanita Brent, who is such an asset and such a friend to our city, we keep telling her we need to get her our house here because she stays here so much. Um, what this is, what it would help me with what I'm working on very hard with our rec department is to, of course, everybody knows how I love my kids, how I love all the kids. I call the Bedford kids my kids. Um, I work in the schools and everything. Is our parks around here. You know, time has not been kind to them. And we do have a lot of little fam a lot of younger families moving in. A lot of our parks, our playgrounds, are not toddler friendly. And they're not handicap friendly. So... I only had one park that I could do with this grant. And um, so I went and had a meeting, me and the mayor went and had a meeting with Aaron and said, okay, let's come up with something. something. And what I kind of came up with, with Ellingwood being so close, it's walking distance to so many wards. Um, ward one, ward five, so many wards. And then it's so, many, so much parking space there. So we're working, hopefully, I'm hoping and crossing my fingers, it's looking good since I was the first one to get the grant in there. Um, I just touched bases with the uh, state representative uh, just today to find out about it. So hopefully this park not only would be toddler friendly from ages two to four and up, it would also be handicap friendly. So I'm excited about that. Um, so crossing my fingers that that will happen. Sometimes those take a little while. Um, also working on another grant to expand the cultural experience um, also in Bedford. And that would be also hit several different areas. 
Now, most of us counts people, we, yeah, we're representative of, I'm representative of Ward 1, but I'm constantly thinking, what I, can, I, can I do for the whole city? Um, as most of y'all know, I've been on Channel 8 several times cooking, promoting local downtown businesses. I don't, uh, I don't get anything out of that because I don't cater anymore, but that's just something that's very important to just promote Bedford in a whole. Yes, Ward 1 is very dear and special to me, and that's my number one, but the city in a whole is also very important. Coming up, well, we'll be having my seventh house torn down that was unrepairable, unrehabable in eight years. That's a pretty good record. Working with the land bank and our wonderful building department who has helped me out. Um, and this all cost our city no money. This was pure grants to get this done. Um, so that's very proud of having that done. And hopefully that eyesore on Greencroft 132 will be hopefully coming down. No, these homes are they're not rehabbable. I've also had what Kevin, I think, three rehabbed that were sold to first uh, first time home first time homeowners. So that's real good too. So what we look at is these homes that in five of them were in the Greencroft area. Five of them they've just been just walked away. Nothing had been done to them. People had gone in and destroyed them and they were years of just neglect. There was no way to rehab that home. So was able to work with the land bank and get them torn down. So that's very important. And crossing our fingers, that one on Greencroft will be coming down soon. Most of these are made into green space, which is really good. And with one, two of them that we had that are on Greencroft, the uh, residents were able on each side to purchase. And also the one on Bexley, they were able to purchase to make their lot a little bit bigger. So um, that's really good. Let's see. Oh, working with Clean Up Ohio campaign, which right now I'm working on Clean Up Bedford campaign. As everybody knows, I, I'm working every day. I used to when I first started on council, I'd do it after church every Sunday. Now I'm doing it three times a day, sometimes every day a week. I, this weekend I got two phone calls from uh, residents that were concerned that something had happened to me or my husband because they didn't see me out cleaning up trash in three days. So they called to check on me. I also had another one of my residents gave me a brand new garbage claw so I wouldn't have to bend over with my gloves to pin. <laughs> That's a nice resident on Tudor. So my residents are, I'm just so lucky to have them. Um, still, of course, I'm like a broken record, the speeding. And it's not just on, on my street, it's on every street, even my dead end streets. So speeding is crazy right now on, on things. It's even Crestful, everywhere, dead end streets. People are just, you know, they don't care about other, it just worries me with my, you know, seniors walking their dogs and, and uh, um, stuff like that. So constantly working on stuff like uh, that, and I want to thank the service department for all the helping out all the time. Y'all kind of unsung heroes back there in our building department that's very small. Um, Getting ready to work on the budget is coming up. That's our busy time. A lot of Mondays. Mondays. So now, from now on, my Mondays are every Monday budget meetings and the council meetings. So, a lot of people don't realize budget when we work on budget. It's not one of us council people have anything to do. Of course, we've got one of the best finance directors in the world, and I say that all the time. That's the guy that that does all the finances. Not one of us has anything to do with any spending. We vote on it as a whole, but not one of us does that budget on our own. So we can't take credit for making the budget better or how we're gonna spend the money. Not one of us. That guy right there in council in the whole, we work on that together. We may not always agree on things, but usually, and we always remind each other, it's four votes. Everything takes four votes to get it passed. We don't have the power to hire or fire. There's four of us. And on some things, it takes more of us to do it. So, well, that's what's going on with Ward 1, and I appreciate y'all coming out tonight. And I'll be taking, we'll, just, we'll have questions later. 
Thank you. but that's okay. I've had more experience and seen more and heard more in the 54 years I've lived in Bedford and proud to say that I'm glad I'm here. I really am. I, uh, half of my time here in Bedford is serving the people as your um, elected official for Ward 4. I've known a lot of these people the whole time. I used to run the uh, election poll over at Glendale School and before the person could even sign in, I had everything all ready for them in the book. I do the same thing at U.S. Bank. I feel that age is just a uh, frame of mind. I try to be happy every day. I'm not royalty. I'm just like you. I'm normal. Every day, try to keep somebody happy by smiling person. Um, basically, Sandy took a lot of the thunder out of everything, but she explained a lot to you, which is very good on her part. I believe that uh, when she does talk to everybody, she does try to explain very well uh, on what's going on with the city. <clears throat> My overall view of Ward 4 residents, they care about their homes, their property, and their neighbors. And I feel the same way about my apartment dwellers. We had a few concerns we try to handle. And the two best apartments I really want to say thank you to because they're there for us at all times, is our service department, headed by Clint Biller, and our building department, who is the commissioner, is um, Calvin Beverly. Um, all the, almost all of our residents have taken pride in their homes and yards, and including the apartments as well. Before Colony Club 2 and um, Bedford Place and Bedford Dreams was built with nothing but a big field. And at that time, I used to take my daughters and any of the kids that were living by me up to that field because on Sunday, there was a man from Maple Heights. They used to fly kites. The, the amount of kites per line that he used to use was at least 20. And this was the biggest thing to see in the neighborhood side playing ball over there but you know what that left a spot in my heart because you know what it was a nice remembrance of the area that we lived in and the people who helped make it nice for the kids up there um and many requests and concerns from county club over the past year and a half uh, with the covid and every every other thing and i had somebody i could always rely upon on beside a few of my good residents there that i touch base with on a regular basis but I wanted to say every time there was a concern I would talk to our city manager Mike always has time for all of us and all of you if he can't straighten it out he'll try his time to do the best thing for us and I wanted to say thank you Mike mm -hmm. thank you Mike <laughs> one place of business in Bedford at the corner of Trini and Lee Road, and that's called Hop In, formerly Bob Adams Sonoco, who I knew when he got there. Um, that was a very busy place. Now it's still busy, yes, we appreciate the service station there, but after hours, late hours of the night, I don't think that we should have to have them operating even though it's their, their, their choice and their livelihood, but we don't want trouble. We don't want people from other towns coming in and making trouble. We like peace and quiet up there, or anywhere in the city. <clears throat> um, most expect, most people expect when they come to Bedford because they want to be here. It's a safe area to live in and a safe city to be supportive to their residents. And we take pride in our fire and police department and service department and others that 
try to do this for us at all times. <clears throat> um, over the weekend, there was everywhere knew about 9-11. I was at U.S. Bank the morning that that happened, and our former city manager was Bob Reed at that time. He came in the bank at 9.46, a little bit about 9.40. And he told me what happened. We had a little TV screen. And we did see the second building hit by the plane. People that don't go through major, or if you're not in the service, and know about war and things happening to us. And we are very fortunate. And we should thank God for every day. And don't go through it. But you know what? It happened to us. And I was hurt. And I still am. But I don't try to show it. But I do appreciate everybody that was involved. And the guys, <clears throat> um, the people that suffered and was lost, we paid honor to them this past weekend at the square. Our mayor and our city manager and our fire and police department had a beautiful ceremony of dedication. And I thought that was very, very special. And if they had to do it again, we would be right there again to do it. Now, ending in my little spiel, because I don't want to keep this any longer, I know we have to, because now that we're getting older, we go to bed earlier, sometimes. But um, I wanted to say thank you to Mayor Stan Kochi and Ms. Sandy Spinks, Ward 1. These two were two, you didn't have to wind them up. They were so wound up, they worked tire tirelessly for a whole weekend. i never seen so much vim and vigor and excitement to be there to do something to make us happy and have something to do for the weekend. Um, <clears throat> there was going to be two more concerts on the square and I believe the Fridays are all done for the season. One more to go for the Fridays according to Jeff. If you have any questions you can ask him after the meeting because I'm not aware of too much right now about things. Uh, I do spend a lot, not that I like it, but most of my time's at home with my, <clears throat> with my husband, but I made myself a caregiver of him. I was sick, and I said, there'll be never a day that I won't be there for him. Um, I just wanted to say, lastly, good health and happiness, even though our year's ending soon. Next year should be a better year. Hopefully it will be. We'll all be back here again. Give you another year of me, and we'll go on from there. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to go by the clock on a wall because it's not running. <laughs> Our maintenance guy's been trying to work on it. So. Uh, we're we're going to get into the questions, and uh, like I said, we'll go one side to the other. One question per person, unless all the questions were answered by the individuals, and then we'll go back for a second one if you have it. Uh, anybody would like to start? Raise your hand. Yes. Okay, you back the grand or <laughs> Sorry, uh, are we going to have to have to look at both parked and driveways this yeah. year? If we can't see down the street. Have the leaves cut back? The trees cut back? I know. There's a pole. A pole is parked in the driveway. In the driveway, storage. Oh, last the, year, the boats in the, the driveway. Before, and now the trailers sitting there, and it's been, yeah. Uh, it's been fine. These fights with everybody about it. It's just, just keep it there against all the rules and rules and regulations. Because he pays taxes. We don't want to do it. And he knows about Sandy, it. Sandy, yeah. Sandy knows Cal about Cal it. Calvin dealt with this too on Grand Hugo's boat. It was moved previously. If it's back again, we'll deal with it. Oh, that, uh, that, that, that's part of it. But I'm so sorry to say car carriers are really not, not something we should have to put up with. And, and the, the speeding is bad. And we have children riding in the streets with those motorized scooters, you know, and things like that. It's, it's like a main, it's like Broadway. And today she turned into Grand Boulevard 
from Broadway. There was one car carrier had to come down from Warrensboro Park on land, and another one must have turned in from Van on Broadway and parked on the wrong side of the street. Now I, I love Auto Mile, believe me. It's your nice. car. It's that used yes. car. We think I, we're, we're aware of the, the, the it's a used car dealership. Yeah. We've had some conversations with them before. Um, we'll, we'll get out. I know I've, I've talked to the council. I've talked to council and Sandy uh, in about this. Um, we've been in there. I know our, our building inspector was in there. Um, it seems like it gets better, and then they have a different driver or a different delivery person. And it, I don't know if it's the way their GPS, whatever it is. I don't know if it brings them down that way. Um, this is no trucks. I, we, we, put, we put those additional signs up this year. I know. I know. I'm um, but yeah, it's, I, it's the one used car dealership. But we'll, we'll make a stop out and have a uh, conversation. And the children riding these scooters in the street, motorized thing, and there's even a man that right, drives about 40 miles an hour on one of those stand up ones. And uh, it, uh, it just got not to be Grand Boulevard anymore. I got the garden award again for the first time this year. I take care of my property. I'm bragging. <laughs> I know. I know. I've seen it. And, uh, uh, I love the bedroom. I've been actually over 15 years. And now I'm kind of hesitant so well, about yeah, one, what one, state should I go? Or, you should stay. I want to stay. We like you here. I don't know anywhere. That's what I like here. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I've been here all my life, too. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I, I but, don't. Uh, when you see things happen, it's best to call dispatch right away. Okay, you're, well, you're not you're not bothering them. That's why they're there. We have a beautiful dispatch center right here in town with uh, how many uh, dispatch officers in there. Uh, that way, the the calls get documented. They can find out what times. If somebody does something on a regular time every day, that's important too. Hey, this guy goes out at eight o'clock every morning. Then, then the police can can target that. You know, yeah. they're not going to catch everyone because these guys are extremely busy, uh, but they do their best. And yeah. and but when they get a call, they're going to deal with it. So it's yeah. best to call when it happens because if if you just wait and what? No, I know and. <laughs> Uh, right. I, I called dispatch, uh, right. you know, for so they have to buy If Like, with any of your concerns, and I, I know the mayor just said it, it's always most important to contact us right away. Um, and, and I know a lot of times, you know, we'll get calls through council people or, or whatever the case is. But the time lapse that goes in between, right? Um, you know, by calls getting transferred around, we, we miss a lot of things when it happens that way. Yeah. And it's never a bother for us. We're here, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's never a bother when you guys call us with your concerns. We'll gladly go out and check. 90% um, of the time, we'll be able to get there, you know, super fast. Sometimes though there may be a delay just because you know we have to prioritize. Um, but to, to your earlier statement, small problems turn into big problems, and we like to try to nip things early when they're small. So, so please never hesitate to call us. It's never a bother, and uh, you don't even you know necessarily have to disclose who you are. So if you're concerned about your neighbor knowing or whatever, well, all you, you have to do is just talk. You need to uh, you meet you with somebody else. I don't care. I just want the neighborhood to be safe and quiet like it was. And, and that's that's what we all want. And you, you know, we when you voice your concerns to your council people and they, they make it to the city manager, they come across to us and you know, we try to prioritize patrol and get people to where they need to be. And so speeding uh, during after work, uh, when they're coming, people are coming from work, and uh, kids riding, riding in the street with their, what do they call skateboards, and somebody, something terrible is going to happen when you say it's whatever. Right, and that's why it's good to call, because then right. um, we can help try to avoid 
any horrible situation. And I must say, the fire department has been very nice to me, too. We help me change the batteries. Good. Okay, this side. Uh, okay, if I was going to chime in, maybe I can help you out on this. So, as a car dealer, I can dictate to my manufacturer of what time my trucks come and where they unload. Like, I, don't, I personally at the Monster Store will not let a car, a truck, unload on Rockside or on Broadway and make them come in the back and unload on metal. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not too sure if, you're, if you can do this. And if it's used cars, it ain't, it's not going to, you can't do this. But if, if you see truck carriers going up and down the street on, on Grand, if they're all Chevys, if they're all Mazdas, if they're oh, all Nissan's. I can't tell one from another. <laughs> if, 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 it's, if it stops at a stop sign, you know, I don't know. If you can catch what kind of cars are on there, and either, I would say, contact Mike or the mayor. Yep. And, and you guys, if you came to the dealer, every manufacturer, we can control what time those trucks come, where they unload, and what streets they go up and down. Now, I don't know if it's... it's I don't think it's your auto line. No, it's North yeah. Coast. But if it's a used car, I, know, I think I know what you're talking yeah. about. I, I yeah. can't help you there, but a, a car dealer, if it's a new car truck going down those streets, a car dealer can help you. You know, by, by via calling sure. the city and the city calling the dealer and saying, hey, we'll figure control. that out. I mean, any time yeah, it's ever... If it's new cars. Good, good point, Bill. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, question on this side. I'm oh, sorry. No, I'm just saying. Question on I this guess, side? Yes. I, I guess, I don't know if it's... I know you mentioned from the beginning to... You have one question. So I'll give you one <laughs> question, one comment. I'm not a political person, so the format went up. But I got a couple of concerns. Okay. It's not cut. It's not... Etched in stone. I'm, okay, well, I just try to keep things moving. Okay, but, yeah. But, 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 but I listen. I'm not. I wasn't sure if this was an award show, a pat on the back. There was a lot of other boys going on here. I live in the Bell Court uh, community. Bell Court, the, the street. That's where the, the developer he's passed on. A new developer purchased the property off the share sale, and now he's congesting that property with several homes. He's putting eight two families in that circle, which is a lot. And when I, now I've been there, I've done a responsible home on, I own a couple of homes here in Bedford. And when I bought that property and built my home, and my mother built my brother, I apologize for you know, I had to let him go out here today. <laughs> when we built, my mother 99, she next door to me. And as new people move across the street, they're very responsible, they fix our house. That for the original developer is gone. Now, this new developer is bringing, that is a lie. He is congesting that property. There is no walkway. There is nowhere to park. I'm saying, how are you going to put eight families in each one of those units? He is putting three bedrooms, two baths. So it says to me, that's a family. So you got two side by side. He's putting eight. So it's already four of us back there. You know, it's two, two families back there, two new places. No parking, there's been no lights. I spoke to the city manager years ago about putting lights back there since they've started the building back there. has been break-ins, police have been called, they've stolen the Amish people, you know, the workers, they broke the truck. There's been a lot of activity back there. I put a ring and put cameras back there. I saw Paula the other day, Miss Act, the councilwoman, I mentioned to her my concerns. She said, come and express my concerns here. I've asked for lights that I couldn't even get. I, it was slated for all underground light, all underground service, power from the utility. That's where it was. Mine's underground. The people that's there is underground. Now, the new developer coming in, he's throwing these over here wires. You got a cul-de-sac. Those wires just ugly it up. You don't have a place to park. So if you have one guest, he doing his side, his units are a single car garage. So. They have, with three bedrooms, they have to come in and out. And that circle is too small for eight more units. I mean, that is, it's almost like a project now. It's my, I'm concerned about my property value going down. I spoke to my neighbors about it. Now he's bringing in a homeowners association. I don't need to join, if there's no benefit for me to join a homeowners association, that is for his investment. I've been there for this long. So why would I join a homeowners association? He said, well, if you want to paint the house a certain color, it, there's no benefit for me. So he said, we have a meeting with Lamar, and I want to speak to the building uh, official. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he could come and address the concerns that me and the existing residents have there. He should at least have a slab 
for parking or against parking. You know what I mean? So yeah, and and, and we can. Uh, it's the first time hearing about all, so, a lot of this. So, so a couple of things. I'll, I'll I, that, I can answer a couple of the items, and then Calvin, if you want to jump in, I can tell you the overhead wires. Mm -hmm. They put that in. Um, we told them they couldn't do that. And that's what you're doing. That's what they have. Well, they, 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 they can't. They can't do that. He knows that. Mm -hmm. Calvin and I. They came and asked for special permission mm -hmm. just for one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted to take it from there and go back on turning. Right. Um, what we approved, what the building commissioner approved, has to be underground. And we said, listen, you have an option to request a variance, but that is a minimum six, six weeks process. Mm -hmm. You've got to go in front of the BZA, ultimately it has to go to city council. And I was very upfront with him. I go, odds are, it's probably not going to get approved anyways. It needs to be underground. So he's been told that piece. Mm -hmm. um, I just touched, I asked the service director. We got to check on uh, street lights, um, but I do know as far as you know the association and you know that street was not a public street. Right. We did state that it was built to the city standards, and our inspectors inspected it years ago. Mm -hmm. We have no. We we will take that street, so it won't be anybody's. Our association can't say, oh, you know what, 10 years down the road, we got to replace the call this second. It's going to be on everybody. We are going to take that roadway. So that that's not that shouldn't be a concern as far as the maintenance, you know, plowing all of that. We will do that piece. Um, the original layout of that from the previous owner, mm -hmm. he went in front of planning commission years ago and had that approved for, for those. And then it, it, so it was originally approved for that, mm -hmm. you know, those units and those parcels. Mm -hmm. And then it was also that when, when that gentleman brought it, I think it went to the planning commission a couple of years ago. Yes. Um, and, and they approved it. So it was approved. They basically just reassured or reapproved what was approved originally. Mm -hmm. So you can't do anything about not letting them build on those additional parcels. Um, we will definitely look into the lighting as far as the, the streets. But what about, the, but here's the deal for the parking. You, you, they're like, so if you have guests, that means they have to park all the way down Bell Court. I mean, I'm putting the two that's there, we got two and a half car garages and the driveway will accommodate four vehicles, depending on what size of the vehicles. But with eight, with, with eight more families and three bedrooms each, in that circle, it is too, it's, that's congestion. That is just, it's too much. I don't see why they had to honor the previous, you know, the former. It, it didn't have to be honored. I, it, it, it could have been, at this point, somebody looked at it and say, okay, we got families like that. I spoke to the other neighbors, and they agreed, we all agree that it, at least, it, it, you, need, you need a slab. You need some type of parking for guests. There's nowhere to park it. It's that circle. That's it. Because they driveways, is that's it. When they pull out, you are, if I want to pull out and they pull out, you have to wait. It's almost like a traffic jam. Yeah, yeah. So I just yeah. think that that needs to be reevaluated. Well, if we want to get together after and get some details. <laughs> the site plan that was approved was for six additional structures, not eight. So I'm well, not sure where the eight, eight came. He has, he has eight. He has he has five on one side, two on another. And I was questioning him yeah. because I had my, I got the yeah. original plan. The site plan, yeah, the site plan that we have approved though is for six additional structures. That's all we're going to issue permits for. Six additional two families. That's correct. But and as far as the, as far as the parking, the codified ordinances right now require one indoor and one outdoor, and they will have that. How are they going to have one outdoor? In the driveways. So the driveway is the center, so no street. So somebody, somebody come and visit you. There, there's no, no walkway, right? No, no sidewalk. Right. So you're walking in the street. If somebody come back there, they have to walk down the street. Right. As far as the street lighting, the city or the uh, city engineer has recommended, and I believe we've accepted that to be a dedicated street. The developer is now working on the site or the dedication plat uh, to get it dedicated. I have spoken with him regarding street lighting. Uh, you know, I've also spoken with CEI. The city has to initiate the request, but the cost for the installation of the street light will be on the developer. Okay, this is my issue still is with parking. If, and I've been in the if you go to Avon Lake, you go to, if you go to Rocky River, you go to several cities, 
where they have both side developments, where they have actually laid out a slab of parking for, yes, parking. I mean, so if somebody yeah. walks, they, they're actually walking down the street. What you're saying is they have to walk down, they have to walk in the street to walk back to their development. That's a, that's a safety issue, and to me. There is a 10-foot easement back on each side, this, around the, the circle, so they can walk in the grass and they don't have to walk in the street. I don't know if they'll be walking on the people that can see, now I see, now I see what somebody, if some kids walk on the grass because you walk on the right you know. Well, they are in fact not. It's, it's an easement. Yeah, but the homeowner gets good days. It's, right. I can, listen, but, I can say this. I have... Listen, I'm just looking for my property. You know, I've tried to deal with that for quite some time. I've seen the deterioration of the city. I don't see any new development. All I'm hearing and listening here is saying we're looking for grants, we're looking for volunteers, we're looking for volunteers at that time. No, you're looking for companies, businesses that's going to invest. You're looking for profitable companies to invest in the city. The city is a ghost town. Yeah. You have no stores. You got one giant evil. I mean, I'm seeing the deterioration. This is what I've seen over 25 years. The deterioration of the city that would make me say, well, let me sell. Since the profit margin is up, since you can sell now at a high end and this developer coming in doing this, it gives me no, like you just told her, we'll stay. We want you to stay. This is saying to me, I've asked for a street light, a simple street light for years. And I can't get a street light. And now this guy coming in cramming all these people in, he's going to make it look like a project. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. If these people lose their property or they they over, they paying $200,000 for these properties and they lose the property because the interest rate is low, then if, if it goes defunct, I'll be sitting in the middle, I'll lose my property value that I paid $167,000 for <laughs> 16 years ago, which is up now only by about $30,000. But then I potentially stand to lose. So I'm trying to figure where is the incentive for me to stay. You know, I would like to stay. I like I'm right across the street from the parkway. I like I like where I'm at. I like where I've been for quite some time. But now with this one, I'm like I don't feel like the city is really supporting the people who invested. Those people that bought the house across from me. This guy, he out there, I see him on the ladder. He's doing work. He's trying to maintain the property. But I feel like this developer is just greedy. He could back off two of those properties. It's just greed for him to cram those people in there and then do the overhead wires. He said it was approved. This is what he told me. We have to meet tomorrow. With yeah. him. That, that's not true. Yeah, that's not now, true. But I'm just saying what he did. I'm, I'm telling you what he's selling. And I don't see why I need to join the homeowners association. I was there 16. I've been there quite some time. I don't need. What's the benefit for me or the people that's there already to join? His homeowners association is only for his benefit. It doesn't benefit me. And especially with him not even considering the people that's there and cramming all those families back there without even parking or what I mean what is he wanted I said what about a mailbox? What about a community mailbox? He like, well, everybody got their own mailbox back there. You, right? Does it make sense for the mailman to drive to sixteen units to deliver mail? I don't feel that he is his interest is only for making the money. I ain't got nothing this nobody capital money make that money. But not at the expense of other people losing money, losing the investment. Right, we understand, and certainly we are paying attention, and uh, we're going to look into all of that and take a little exception to that. We're not doing anything other than asking for volunteers. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Are, doing, I'm just saying I've seen. I'm saying the city. I've not seen. I see. I'm looking at Maple Heights. I'm looking at Garfield Heights. Here you got uh, Mazda dealer. I remember you had Chevy. You got that big lot there, the, that giant eagle on the corner. He had both alleys. There were businesses in the community, and now it just seemed like a ghost town. I, I well, yeah, if you're judging by that quarter, and the individual that owned that owned that since the '40s was responsible for all that. That's all private property that we can't dictate. But goes well, that has Park, changed. Brook, that That's not talking Meadowbrook, both sides. Okay. Uh, the changes that the Mazda dealer has been a great catalyst up there. The, it looks good. The, it center, looks the, the shopping center next to it, and we just, she just announced there's another business moving in. Uh, we've been dealing with them, and we have individuals coming in. There's going to be uh, the, the supermarket, Simon Supermarket, that was going to open three years ago. And it, 
And it's my fault that he put the sign up there opening soon. Because I asked him to put that up because people are anxious to have something there. He, he's dealing with his financial things. Uh, if you saw recently all the activity up there at that building. They were filming a movie there. Oh, I thought it was filming a movie, it's going to be on Netflix. Mm -hmm. We don't know the name or oh, when it's yeah, going to be on, but it when they're filming, and it's going to be a supermarket in the in the film. So the movie company came in and stocked the shelves with food, put all 1980s labels on the on the products on the wall. We, Mike and I and, and Jennifer were given a tour of it. I mean, it looks like a real grocery store so much. That people actually grabbed some carts and walked in, started to shop, <laughs> which which just shows people need that building there. Yeah. So there is stuff going on every day. Every day we're being we're contacting, we're looking for people. Jennifer works tire, tirelessly to get that, and Mike, uh, we are with business Excelia with them expanding and now selling their products. That's. That's huge to see. A lot of tax dollars going to come in from there. Uh, we are looking every day at every empty spot. And also, equally important, looking at all the businesses that are there to make sure they stay here. It's tough. It's very tough. We're so fortunate, like, you get a responsible owner that decide he needs to stay here. We need people to stay in addition to uh, attracting new. So that's, that's being done every day, every single day, and the problem is there's 10,000 other cities doing the exact same thing. Amen. So trying to get these people in is a chore. When we do get one, it's huge. We have had a couple come in that were really home runs. Things happen. Uh, one development, uh, the guy that was put on had a heart attack and died. You, you can't predict those things and that project then of course went. The the Walmart building with them losing nine out of their eleven contracts. You can't predict that stuff. But the new no, developers know, going in Target told you that they were gonna leave. Target was there which was solid. They said that Walmart was gonna leave. And, and, and they a did. lot of people knew that Walmart was there. Walmart will destroy it. They, they, Walmart, I, Walmart was their own worst enemy. I, I, I will say that uh, I, I won't be critical to the previous developer, but it wasn't that that was not because Walmart went in there. They were looking to renegotiate their lease, and they laid it right on the line, and they were going to walk out of a lease. I, I, I don't want to get into the specifics um, with the former property owner of that space, um, but that was not just. I, and I'm not trying to correct, but it wasn't because of Walmart. Um, there were issues with the lease between tenant and, and, and owner, um, and they simply couldn't, and, and Target came to us, came to the city. I was in economic development, uh, former city manager Bob Reed, we met with them, and they specifically said, we want to stay, yes, yes, but we have an issue here. We're not signing a 15, 20 year, whatever this lease, we, we need some help. And unfortunately that wasn't able to get worked out. They wanted to be here, and it wasn't necessarily because of because of the Walmart. The Walmart is a destroyer of, you know, they, it was not, it was just bad. It was, I mean, it, it, it impacts right. the city. Well, they like, that, right? When they moved in, I wasn't in favor of it, but they met every zoning requirement and anything we asked them to do, like the back of the building was supposed to be block. We said, no, there's residents around there. We want brick on it. Okay, they did it. There was nothing we could do to stop them because of it's properly zoned. They were the proper retail thing to go in there. We were hoping for the best. It was uh, such a huge store. I know when my folks went in there, they, they couldn't go there. It was so big, they couldn't get around the store. And now we don't have a retail store. Now we don't have one retail store. I mean, if you look, I mean. Well, retail's out the window, big box stuff. I mean, even Maple Heights, if you look at that plat, it looked like Maple Heights was really trying to push with, you know, they got a bunch of water, you know, whatever you store is on there. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know.
Yeah. Well, you're preaching to the choir here because we're looking for that, and that Simon's going to be a huge thing when he finally gets that thing going. He, he's promising us next year. So. And again, I'm not holding a promise because. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Vivian Freeman, and uh, I hate bringing. Uh, my establishment where I live up constantly. But basically what I was going to say, is it possible to get any signs on Terry Road? A litter, some litter signs. If you get I mean, they are cluttering. They throw stuff. That's what I'm working on right now. Yeah, they litter are signs all over the place for the campaign. Bags. I called over to the city. They, you said I should. Center, so you see something, say something, and that's what I'm doing. Good. Uh, going both directions. Trash is littered. There's a got big garbage bag in the middle of it. the street. I don't know when they have to get out of my car and pick it up. Sandy does. Well, uh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna get out of my car yeah. to pick that rubbish up. Okay? I, but I want my dog. But. But all I'm saying is, is it possible to have some litter signs or something uh, and make some fines, make, make some little fines when they come from other, because that's a straight shot, okay, very a lot of traffic. And they're now just throwing pampers. We have fines or substantial fines. The trouble is you can't see it. Yeah. We, yeah. we have to yeah. witness that. The, yes. the key has to witness that. See it. Um, to, to, obviously, I can guarantee if, if one of our officers sees so something like that. So we can't see, you can't have any, do that little sign. Uh, no, 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 we yeah. can possibly. No, that's what I'm, I'm okay. asking. Okay, yeah, I, I, that I possible? We can look at that, we can look at that, yeah. and, and we'll check the area and see what we can do. Okay, um, I think. I thank you so much, Mike. Little, little, sign, little signs can be put off. We can put a hundred signs yeah. on each yeah, side. I know. It's trying to convince the people not people. to do it. But they're just like stop signs. People don't pay attention to those either. Yeah. I, I do. I realize so that. We can put all the signs on that one. It's not going to help the situation. I do understand no. that. People are human. I do understand. And we, we, we are having some issues, too, with we're getting some like drug stuff going around, okay? Now, you call me a busybody or whatever, I mean, call worse, uh, but and it doesn't bother me, one little iota. I'm trying to make where I live a little better place. Like the people saying, I love Bedford, and I am not beneath myself to walk where I live and pick trash up, I do. I'm not going to walk over a paper when I can bend down as long as the good Lord allows me to bend to pick it up. I'm not like that. But, and I have been trying to use my camera to take the traffic. But I live on the first floor, okay? I don't want to jeopardize myself because I'm by myself. And if they see you taking a picture of the license, but I only, only think I would ask, if it's at all possible to have security, sometimes if you see them, perhaps they might deteriorate a little bit. I mean, we got a driver and they come in drive through. And I watch them and I pull in the carport once and he's right beside me waiting for his, the people to come to his car to, to get whatever they came to purchase. Mm -hmm. I want it stopped and I'm trying to do as much as I. See, like me, I'm the only one in that building on that side that's trying. If I see something, I'm going to say something, because Sandy said so. Afterwards, if you want to just chat, as far as I I don't want to get into that. But no, no. I, 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 I don't want everybody to know I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. So we'll, we'll right. talk yeah. afterwards. Okay, thank you. And that's the problem. We can't teach people responsibility or caring for the their neighbor. Um, no, and you have to. Have it's to getting rampant on that stuff. And, yeah. Uh, and like I said, the officers, they see it, they're going to deal with it. 
And I too could and we them. can't be everywhere every time. No, that's me. I got eyes. But one and word. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and I thank you for listening. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Mayor, been here 30 years. I've been to a couple of these meetings. And I, my hat's off to everybody. It's a hard, it's a hard business trying to get people and businesses, keep their value and everything up. Times are changing. People are coming, people are going. Bad people are coming. Yes. I live on Willard. I've had these conversations with Sandy. I never use the 911. <coughs> I don't think it's an emergency. I prefer the dispatch. I always do. I've talked to Mike. Uh, the speeding is ferocious. In regards to the car hauling on Grand, I know because I stopped right there and pick up all their 40 ounce beer cans. Yep. How can you drive a car hauling on a 40 ounce and go back to driving? Oh, I pick up the bottles and the cans. There was times I wanted to bring whole shopping bags here for you guys for the meetings from the pub up the street on Willard. Yep. That is a nuisance. You could get high off the second hand smoke when you make a left coming, in your, coming down your street. I don't know what the occupancy there is. Parking overflows, and then it goes seven, eight houses down in the street. The lady comes out. She's a business owner. I understand that aspect. She's there to make a dollar. She cleans up that in the derby building across the street. But come down to the stop sign sometimes when the whole food trays are dropped off in the middle of the street. Yeah. The bottles, your cognac, your uh, patrol bottles. I mean, there are so many different bottles, so many different uh, cups yeah. on that street sometimes. Is that business a good thing for that street? COVID came and went. I mean, or COVID is still here. Do we blame COVID? Do we blame the movement? Do we blame... Because the excuses sometimes, I mean, we have to take responsibility for our own uh, city. Uh, each one of us has some role to play. I don't mind picking up the cans. I mean, I recycle them. The bottles go in, they recycle. Try to keep it, but how many of us are there? I know, it just gets maddening at a time. The speeding. That's why I'm here. 70 miles. Oh my gosh. And the passive mean, people come down right. the street. We know, and, and I can go to every ward in town. Uh, yeah, Willard, Grand, uh, Talbot, Archer Road where I live, Walnut Street. Any any road in town is just... Mayor, these, these, these folks are the devil advocate for a police officer. Who wants to be a police officer nowadays? I mean, you're videotaped for everything you do. You're under a microscope, but are these phones? I'm I'm all for videotaping the speeding yeah. right at the edge of the street. Let it get out. Well, now it's confrontational, but that's what we have 911. And we don't want anybody to get into the confrontation. How do we yeah. stop it? Yeah. Any comments on that? I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I can I can tell you, Willard is a street we've always paid attention to. I've always seen you guys. And, and not to say we 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 don't. And we, we know guys. that's a we know that's a major through street. Why can't we be a um, And you know, I can, I, can, I, can, I, I you know I I can tell you you know you know all day long that that's a street that I know I've personally sat on at, at, the, at the church and. and up at the Willard, or, um, the Walsh building. It's a little cut right through the street with no lights. It's exactly. get rock safe so they and, fly. Um, you, you know, it's, I, we do pay attention to it, just like we, we, we try to focus on, you know, where we get the complaints. Um, our, you, you referenced COVID and our big push, uh, even when, uh, you know, kind of, you didn't see as many people out and about was to have the, have the guys out in the neighborhoods and you know on the side streets and just present in, in the neighbor in the city and I can assure you they're, they're doing that um, and in regards to the to the bar you spoke about um, in my present role uh, we've worked with liquor control uh, the Ohio investigative unit and, and everything to address problems that come in and out um, and in regards to the owner, they've been nothing but cooperative with us. Um, you know, like any business, they can't always control who their clientele, you know, who the clients are, or the, the people patronizing that day. Um, but we have, you know, not only tried to handle and address things in-house as the, you know, the Bedford Police Department in the city, but also, you know, using other other tools, uh, you know, with liquor control and, and, and other groups. So, um, enforcement can only happen when we see it. 
Correct. That's a right. tough one, especially with littering. Yeah. littering. Thirty years ago, Maple Lights, I believe, was known for the DUI capital. God forbid you had a drink of water from Maple Lights. What can we do in Bedford to, to hammer litter, hammer something, and so you, they don't come back? You know, so, and, and, I, and I made a note after Ms. Freeman spoke. Um, years ago, we, we used to, and we still have the juvenile diversion program, um, but some of the, the hands-on interaction has slowed down just uh, you know, with, with, with uh, COVID and, and, and all that. Uh, but that, those kids would be, basically, they, they'd commit a juvenile offense and they would be ordered to perform service hours. And so for years, uh, you would see a, an officer, an auxiliary officer, out there with a group of kids picking yeah. up trash. Yeah. So we don't do that. Uh, well, it, and that kind of fell off due to, uh, due to COVID and not wanting kids congregating together. I made a note on my uh, on my list up here to address it with our diversion coordinator and see if it's something we can pick back up again. So the motorcycle yes. police. Yes. yes. I ride the motorcycles. I love the guys. I see them a couple times this year. I know everybody they got health issues, but but I think that is a tool. Yeah, he you was out today. It. He was out today. You can't see it. You don't know where he's sitting. Right. It's awesome. Yeah, he was out today. So just a couple things I just want to add to that. Um, and and uh, Lieutenant's right, you know, with, with COVID and uh, that community diversion, it, it kind of fell off a bit. I will say um, Clint and uh, his assistant, Sean Francis, were working with Court Community, Cuyahoga, Service. Court community Service through Cuyahoga County. We actually had them out a few times last year in certain areas, and they did the, the cleanup. A lot of it is, again, as far as us getting them and citing them, we have to see it. Um, we grew up as with far the, as we grew up with the Indian and the Tear, the commercial. They clean up Warrensville Center Road through Maple Heights. The crews come out and spot us within days. It's like, I mean, what is it with people that just throw everything out the window? That's, that's something yeah, that's I think that's, 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 that's something that obviously we're all all cities are dealing yeah. with. That. Just a couple other points. Um, you know that that location, and, and again, as the lieutenant said, they've worked with liquor control and whatnot. You know, occupancy for that is 99, so it's about three times the amount of people that are here tonight. They're allowed to have that many people inside the building. Um, you look at the parking lot; it, it's you know, does it fit? No, it's not going to fit 99 or even half of that if you go with a buddy. Um, so yeah, that's obviously. A challenge. The Derby um, Fields cut them off for a while, didn't they, with some yellow tape? But then they went under the streets and now they're back into the Derby building. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it. on that. I, I, I'd have to check on that. Yeah. The, other, the other thing is, and just to add as far as speeding, um, you know, PD, we did purchase um, additional um, monitoring, speed monitoring devices. Um, we have one that's stationary in town, um, right. another that we've been moving around. The department has been moving it around to some of these target areas. Um, I will tell you that, you know, I, I, I've heard a couple people call and say, hey, nice purchase, it doesn't work, it's blank. It's blank for a reason, okay? If you see it and you don't see it flashing or whatnot, don't worry. Uh, it's collecting data for us. And, and, and we review that data, it helps us really get a feel of, you know, what some streets, man, that they're really moving, or others, they're, they're, they're really not. You know, some, we've had some where we can see, man, there, you know, there's a speeding, we've got to really focus. And then we've had others where we've had it in an area, um, you know, due to complaints or concerns, um, and the highest speed was 31 miles an hour at 25. Well, so there, it, it helps us gauge. So we purchased more of those. Would video from us, is it valid if we take a cell phone video? Or same guy, you know, I, I've talked to Sandy, the same, so, same Dodge comes flying down that street. Why that, that's that's a perfect example. I can tell you, if there's a specific regular, let us know. Talk to us afterwards. Okay. You know, I, I, I've worked with the current chief. I've worked with the uh, previous chief and, and the staff and the lieutenant, um, and we've addressed those. You know, one of them, um, it was a former councilwoman, uh, Marilyn Zolata. She had a red Mustang, and it was not her, go, not her but it was going crazy <laughs> in the neighborhood. And these guys found out where the car was, where, knocked on the door, and it was a 17-year-old kid. It was his dad's car, and his dad said, you're not going to have any problem with that car anymore, nor this kid. Gone. Yes. Unfortunately, the kid never drove that car again. But I remember yeah. that story yeah. specifically. It's something that's like that. being responsible. Right. It's, it's, yeah. if, if we know those regulars, you know, we, we'll deal with that person violating instead of like a, a, a man, you know. 
Why not? Because of the state state rule. Somebody in the court said, "Oh, I got stopped. I didn't know it was a police car." And it went to court, and I don't know the details. But that's court's rule. You have to have marked cars to do traffic. Right? The courts have to accept. The courts have to accept the mark. Yeah, they've they've made some where you might see a car that has uh, uh, gray letters instead of white letters, but they're still marked. Okay, can I ask you a question? A oh, police sure. car has to be marked, please. Right. Uh, traffic car, right. right? So, how big does it? Could you make a sign this big, please? <laughs> Why not? To you got the sign. Like, to, 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 to be honest, sir, it's the, the courts. The, the court has to. The court accepts what they'll what they'll determine to be appropriate market. So, uh, if you have a court that would accept that, then great. But well, uh, find out who the judge is. <laughs> and you'll change. No. Yeah, oh, no, no jokes. But that, that's the way some of the rules are today. And, uh, See, I'm new with this. Uh, I've only been here 68 years or so. Well, you're a new guy here then. I'm your 70. I'm I just got here. <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna, to. Break right at nine o'clock to respect everybody's time. So we got about okay. twelve minutes left. We have a question over here or a comment. We're, we're not just looking for attaboy. We're having some great conversations tonight, yeah. good and bad, uh, and that's why we're here. Uh, well, we love effort. Else? Thank you. We appreciate that. Are you here? Well, if nobody here. I'll take. You had one. <laughs> I know you had three. Oh, I oh. <laughs> no, no, we'll come back. We'll come back. And on Green Cross, you have signs up to a certain area to the house they get ready to tear down. Those people got smart. They come up to no parking sign and then they'll pull up ahead of it and leave the car there. Yeah. And it, those streets are just too tight. It's just hard for me to get in and out of my driveway. But across the street, 21, people are always there. And they just park on the street. And so in the summertime, it's really bad. If, if and I sent you an email. If there's a specific. <laughs> If there's a specific home or someone that's violating, we'd like to target that specific, and I'm, I'm familiar with, with that home. Yes. Um, that's what we'd like to address that instead of just doing the wide sweeping, um, no parking. I will say, um, like I said at, at the very start, you know, we don't make decisions based on like what my malice would want or what the mayor would want. You know, we collectively engage, we have conversations. You know, I rely on, on, you know, our two safety forces primarily when it comes to questions like that. You know, the one biggest question is, do we have issues getting through there? Do we have issues with our fire truck or EMS? And, and you know, our guys have always said we don't. Um, I never had, I never had them say we can't have access somewhere. Um, I, I've talked to both chiefs at length about it. Um, we'd like to obviously address, is there an issue? Is there a certain property owner that's parking overnight that we need to address, or are they parking in an area where it's illegal and we need to address? Let us know of that specific instead of just doing a wide sweeping. Because you remember a couple of weeks ago when the gas deal, the gas company was out there, we had a gas line problem. The guys across the street, they had to go and look for them because the cars were sitting for minutes on the street. Another thing, can I ask just one more question? I'm not, well, the, I'm and not then, then we go up here and let her ask her a little question. <laughs> Uh, does anybody else have a comment? Yeah, in the back here. Hi. Um, I live on West Lindale, and I don't know if we're allowed to have trucks go down our street by semis. I think that's a no truck route, isn't it? I'll use some of that check. I have a Judy. Judy. Hold up, but if there are, we'll, we'll double check them. Judy. Get them quite Only frequently, right. actually. Right. And I think they're making a, a, a shortcut over to Lee Road or to the church. Judy, some of the um, GPS doesn't know all our streets, and there's been a couple of trucks because I said stop one one time coming down when yeah. they're in towards by, by, by Schneider's around there, and he says that's where the GPS sent me, and they don't know that Granite's off the Lee Road stop. They don't realize Rockside Road goes into Lee Road, and GPS is not. Is it true? But I no, know, yeah, but another person that was delivering the show. Well, if they're getting more frequent, it, it either, either is a GPS problem that they're all picking up, or they're just coming down there. 
Mm -hmm. I know I stopped the truck on uh, uh, High Street, and he turned and once he said, "Once I turned the corner, I realized I shouldn't be on this street." But he says, well, "Here's my GPS. Look, sending me here instead of all the way up to Northfield." So, and you know, they. I'm not making excuses for these drivers, and especially if it's one guy had one problem, okay. But when you have more, and they keep continuing to do it, or like the car haulers, that's inexcusable. The thing, the thing that there's no signs that say no trucks. I don't think on either end of our street. But there is well, on West, 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 West Grace, but there isn't. I don't think there's any on West Long Island. You know, and that's good. And that's another reason we have these conversations because we we drive these streets all the time and. You can drive past something a hundred times and not notice it, but now that you've said that, now it's going to be in my mind about all these truck roads. So thank you for that. I just wanted to say how wonderful Sandy is to take all the work she does and follow to thank you. Uh, they deserve a standing ovation. Mom, we won't go into that because I'm too old. <laughs> I want you to know, all of, I know our cousin people are great, and so are you. Well, so are our residents. We, we're all up here because we care about the city. Well, I and we're going to do the best we can. I feel that way. I and uh, that it's two of the hardest working people right here in the yes. council. Yes. Mr. Mayor. Yes. yes. No, that was me. I'm asking. This is all I'm saying. You. Mother, please. No. Yeah. <laughs> Mother, and I was mad and say this. In spite of, I'm a bit right? And in spite of all of our so-called problems, we have one of the most beautiful, old, loving cities, Bedford. Mm -hmm. I lived in Bedford Heights for 30 years before I bought that condo in Bedford. But even when I lived in Bedford Heights, from the early 70s, I would come to downtown Bedford during the summer because it's so quaint and so beautiful that it's like living in a, another time. It's you know, oh, it's yeah, just yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, in spite of our problems, now I have a condo. I live off attorney, and I'm the vice president of the executive board. But I want to say this: our trash day is pick up on Wednesday, and oftentimes when the people dump the trash. Okay, just find stuff left on the ground. Oh, yeah. So what? Get out and pick it up. That's right. If it's in front of your door, put on a glove if you have to pick it up and throw it in the thing. You, I can't even ask me because of the vice president. But I've got something. So what? Pick it up. You want me to come and pick yours up? What's wrong with all of us? Uh, all of us. All of us. Oh, all that's a great movement. That's a great movement. Neighbors help up. Everybody oh, sure. pick up. Very good. That's what it's all about. Yes. A little common courtesy. You know, that's all we need. A little kind of, you know, when you get up to the stop sign, let the other guy go. Or if you're looking for a parking, or if you're going to, somebody's going too slow, well, give them a break. Maybe they're having an issue. Just a little common courtesy would yes. change everything around. That's true. Take a couple of blue bags and a rubber glove and pick up the beer can. I hate it. Well, we don't, I'm and, mad about it. And we don't want anybody getting hurt out by the street doing this yeah. either. Be it's very careful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a great idea. Not, and we only got five minutes left, and I want to give each council person a chance to wrap up a comment tonight. And, and again, thank you all for being here. These are great conversations. That's the reason we have these. I know when we're in person, you get a better reaction. And that's why we didn't want to do these on Zoom. Yeah. You, you wouldn't get that interaction. Mm -hmm. So, well, we started with you. Paula, would you like to? Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Your input was great. Uh, I do try to make an attempt to go. Yes, ma'am. We'll hear you. Hear me now. Um, I drive to the ward several times a day. Fortunately, last night, I saw Sheila because I haven't seen her for almost 10 years. Even though we're neighbors, we hours and things miss each other. I invited her here tonight, and I was glad she came. And thank you for coming, Sheila. I'm glad to see my other neighbors in Maggie Yars, and a lot of people from Ward 1, I know, and even my own administration. You know what? We need this. We need this kind of people 
Yeah. Yeah. Every people, any person, I should say, talking like I'm not educated, but I might not be. To come here and let us know what's going on. Because <coughs> Brian and I have talked on the phone several times. She asked about mutual aid at one time because she, she's there at nighttime by herself. If there's nobody going through the areas in that, you get kind of worried about what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And in the situation that we've had with her new owners of her colony club, I'm going to have to say colony club. Yes, please. They don't care. care. They only they want rent care. money. Um, there's been break-ins that are, maybe the police department, whatever, whatever, a couple of them down there. These older people, instead of trying to make sure that they're treated properly, they're getting booted from management saying that we don't want you to live here anymore. That's true. It's not right. Oh, yes. I don't think it is right, yeah. and I will make sure that nobody's going. Thank you, Paul. And that's the way I look at it. Thank you. And matter of fact, you all can stay because I'm still going to be here a little bit longer, too. All right, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Not in the seat, but I'm going to be in the city. And I got a package for you, my friend over there. All right, uh, Sandy, you got a last word? Yeah, I did have something that I had one of my residents on floor caught me out in the parking lot. She couldn't stay because she doesn't drive uh, past dark. Um, Everybody, all my seniors out here know that I'm always, I post on the Bedford uh, Senior Club all the time about safety things. Um, there is, I did post a thing the other day about phone scams and stuff. Well, there's a new one going on. This guy showed up at, uh, on Flora, and the lady did not have her, her house was for sale, but it was listed on Zulu or Zulu or one of those things. But she didn't have a sign up for it. Well, a guy showed up, she's got the front door open and he goes knocking on the door and she goes the front door and he goes I'm here to do an inspection mm -hmm. well she knew because she was going through her son-in-law and she knew that there was no inspection the guy was like no no so she goes hold on I'll, let me call my son-in-law right now and he got in his car and took off mm -hmm. yeah. so when anything happens like that call the police please call the police because it's it's sad that people are take up take advantage of, of seniors, but they do. Um, and as far as again the trash thing, you know that's that's just me. It's not everybody does their little bit of, of helping it. Another thing on this um, thing for I grew up in Louisiana, Texas. You don't see litter there. There's stores. When you go into a grocery store, you have to carry your own bag. They have no shopping bags. And that helps a lot of the litter. Most of the stuff that I pick up right now, liquor bottles. And I just found this out. The reason why so many liquor bottles, because they they drink before they go into the bar. That's why I picked up 16 Patron bottles on Willard, because they drink before they go to the bar. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So of course, being an artist, I have been able to. I took 16 bags. I have a friend that does sculptures out of trash <laughs> so he's getting ready to build something really cool so I'm trying to do that but thanks everybody for all the com comments and stuff uh, I appreciate it they are all very dear to me and I uh, take serious what I do this is not a part-time job to me this is a full-time job for my residents and my whole city thank y'all very much Good. thank you all for coming we, we certainly appreciate it and I made a quick little volunteer sheet if anybody <laughs> this is for all kind of projects. So thank you, thank you all.